as we continue our series entitled 40 Days. We're gonna, I'm going to get a little riled up today. I just want everybody to know, all right? Because the title of this message is Breakthrough in 40 Days or Less. Breakthrough in 40 Days or Less. I'm not guaranteeing that can happen. But the burden I feel like God gave me for this message was this. It was a picture. There's some people out there who've been up against it for some time. Maybe it's a habit. Maybe it's an addiction. I don't know what it is, but you're up against it. You're sick and tired of it, and you're ready for breakthrough. And and I don't have as much time as I'd love to have, but we're going to get into it with this message because God wants every one of his children to experience the fullness of breakthrough in every area of our lives, all right? So get your Bible out. If you got a Bible, go to 1 Samuel chapter 18. We're going to be hopping around. We're not going to start there, but let's get right into it, all right? Let me show you in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 20. This is a moment in King David's life where he just saw incredible, miraculous breakthrough in the military terms, okay? So I want you to see David just cries out before God because he's so amazed at the breakthrough he just saw. And I want you to see what he does. 2 Samuel 5, verse 20. So David went to Baal Perazim and defeated the Philistines there. The Lord did this, David exclaims. He burst through my enemies like a raging flood. So David named that place Baal Perazim, which means the Lord who bursts through. Now we need to remember before we, we walk out these next steps I'm going to give you. And these steps are, are simple, but I promise you they're not easy. But before we even take a first step, we all need to remember, breakthrough comes from the Lord, not from us. It does not come from my strength. It comes from God's power. All right. And we serve a God, the God who breaks through all of our enemies like a raging flood. So you, my friend, may be watching this and you don't know God personally yet. I've got great news for you. At the end of this message, you're going to get an opportunity to meet him. Face to face, you're going to get to meet God, the God who breaks through. And if you're up against it, the best advice I can give you is introduce yourself to the God who breaks through all of your enemies like a raging flood. Okay, what I'm going to do in this message, very quickly, I'm going to juxtapose the life of Saul against the life of David. Since David was the one that exclaimed, this is the God who breaks through, I thought it would be wise to just take a look at one of the biggest breakthroughs in David's life. You probably already know which one I'm thinking about. His victory over Goliath. One of the biggest breakthroughs recorded in Scripture one-on-one. Now I want you to see Saul versus David, all right? Be really intentional Because I believe there's some things that Saul did that kept him from experiencing breakthrough. David, I also believe, did some things that allowed him to see God burst through in ways very few have ever gotten to see. All right, so here's point number one. And every point is kind of 1A and 1B. Point number one, Saul sought credit. Saul sought credit. Saul one day hears the people singing a song. Saul has his thousands, David his ten thousands. All right? And look at Saul's response. You'll see what's in his heart. 1 Samuel 18, verse 8. This made Saul very angry. What's this? He said. They credit David with ten thousands and me with only thousands. Next, they'll be making him their king. Okay, do you see? Saul, looking for the credit. He was bothered that David was getting more credit than him. Okay, here's point 1B. David gave credit. Saul sought credit. David gave credit. 1 Samuel 17, verse 46. David is speaking to Goliath. Listen to how he talks. Today, the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. Now that When you know how big your God is, that, my friend, is how you talk to your enemies. I will kill you and cut off your head, and then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know, watch this, that there is a God in Israel. David does not say, and the whole world will know how awesome I am. David says, when this happens, the whole world will know 
There is a God in Israel, and he is the God. Okay, let's settle this, because maybe you need breakthrough in a way you never have before. I got a question for you. Who's going to get the credit once you get the breakthrough? Because maybe you've been battling something, an addiction, and you want, once you get your breakthrough, you want to hear people say, man, you're so strong, you're so awesome. I hate to tell you this, but if you're wanting any of the credit that alone goes to God, I'm not convinced God's going to trust you with that breakthrough. Why? Because we have got to deflect all of the credit, all of the glory and honor from getting it ourselves, putting it on the one true God. God is the one that did this. Okay? Step one, don't see credit. Give all of the credit to the God who breaks through. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. If your aim is to take all of the credit, God will lend you very little of his strength. If you want all the credit, God's going to lend you very little of of his strength. You give him all the credit, you're going to see him give you more of his power. I want you to write this question down if this is a struggle for you. Would you rather do something earthily small and get all of the credit or do something eternally big or huge and God get all the credit? You need to reconcile that in your heart. I would rather do some eternally huge things and God get all the credit. I don't need it anymore. I want to see miraculous victory against all of my enemies. God, you get all the credit, all the glory. That's step one. Here's step two. Saul asked, who am I? Let me read this to you. This is when the prophet Samuel comes to Saul and says, hey, buddy, newsflash, you're the hope. You and your family are the hope of the nation of Israel, you're going to be their first king. And listen to how Saul responds. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 21. You can turn there if you want. Saul replied, but I'm only from the tribe of Benjamin. My English teacher always taught me, never start a sentence with the word but. Can I add something to that? Never ever start a sentence with the word but when God is trying to get into that sentence. But, but I'm only, and this is how a lot of us talk, but I'm only from the tribe of Benjamin, the smallest tribe in Israel. And my family is the least important of all the families of that tribe. Why are you talking like this to me? Okay, when you study the life of Saul, you'll find he was focused on himself. This is why he asked this question. Okay, his reign as king was not going to come down to his strength. It was supposed to come down to God's power. But Saul starts off saying, who am I? How how could I be even talked about as someone who could do something so big or so great? All right, who am I? David does not ask, who am I? Let me show you. To be, David asked, who is this? Who is this? David, just to give you a little background, David shows up on the scene Goliath has been taunting the the entire army of Israel for 40 days. David shows up, and I want you to see what comes out of his mouth. This is 1 Samuel 17, verse 26. David says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Okay, incidentally, when you settle who you are in Christ, and understand who God is. You don't ask, who am I? Because you're too focused on who God is. And when you settle who you are in Christ and who God is, you know the question you ask, who is this? What enemy is this trying to defy my God? That's how you talk. Okay, from time to time, when I'm counseling with somebody, I'll I'll be at coffee or something, and, and I'll be trying to light them up and help them understand what God's created them to do, and it's so much bigger than they can wrap their mind around. And God wants to partner with them in order to pull it off. And unfortunately, more often than I I would like, I get this kind of a response. But who am I? Who am I 
that God would ever want to partner with me. And every time they do it, something rises up in me. And here's what I would say. If there's any part of you that would say, who am I that God could ever use me? You want to hear my response? Here it is. Oh, oh, who are you? I've read about you in the Bible. Oh, I'm, I'm not in the Bible. Oh, yes, you are. I've read about you in the Bible. You're that one the Bible says Jesus left heaven for and all of his riches in heaven. You're the one Jesus left heaven for to come lay his life down for. Oh, I've read about you. You're the one Jesus, the son of God, calls a friend and the Holy Spirit calls a home. Oh, buddy, I've read about you. And I could go on and on and on. You're not who you think you are. But when you understand how big your God is and how much he personally loves you, you stop asking the question, who am I? I don't care who I am anymore. I figured it out. My calling is to figure out who God is because the more I understand what God is like and who he is, the stronger I get as one of his children. And I become less and less afraid of all of my enemies. Listen to me. You may be one of those who's thinking, who am I? that God would ever want to partner with me. You need to figure this out. Asking that question isn't going to get you where you want to go or where God created you to go. You need to settle who you are in Christ and who God is. And when you do, you'll start talking like David. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's trying to scare me and defy my God? When you know who you are in Christ and who God is, that's how you talk. Here's point number three. Saul was blinded by what he could see. Saul was blinded by what he could see. Remember when David was saying in 1 Samuel 17, I'll I'll read it to you, verse 32. David says to Saul, don't worry about this Philistine. David told Saul, I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous. Saul replied, there's no way you can fight this Philistine. So listen to what what he's really saying. He's about to get really point blank here. You could never possibly win this fight. You're only a boy. The king is talking in this manner to the little boy who's about to take down the giant the king is so afraid of. You're just a little boy, and he, that enemy you're about to pick on, has been a man of war since his youth. You have no chance. See, here was Saul's problem. He was too swayed by what he he saw, what he could see, only what he could see. Well, let's look at David. Oh, if you're taking notes, write this one-liner down. I love this one. Someone who thinks in earthly terms will never experience supernatural results. That's nasty right there. Saul was thinking in earthly terms, and that's why he he couldn't be trusted with divine results. David, on the other hand, was not focused on the fact that he was just a little boy. Let's look at it. 3B, David was emboldened by what he had seen, not what he could see, what he had seen. 1 Samuel 17, verse 36 David, in response to what Saul has said, listen to where his confidence comes from. I've defeated or I've done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it again to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. David looks, the little boy, into the eyes of the big bad king and says, I get it. You think I'm just a little boy? That's fine. You're stuck on what you can see about me. But let me help you understand the resume of my God's faithfulness. I have seen God do this to the lion. I have seen God do this to the bear. And I'm going to see my God do this to the giant standing before all of us today. A little boy talk like that. How in the world could a little boy talk like that? I'll tell you how. Because he knew he had a really big God. David knew he had a really big God. He had seen God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness in yesterday's storm is what builds my faith for today's battle. 
God is faithful. He's so faithful that even when I'm unfaithful, God is still faithful. Listen, David knew. Oh, I've seen God do some incredible things before. This is no different. God hasn't changed. Maybe the size of my enemy has. Okay, listen, if you're needing breakthrough right now, and I don't know in which area of your life you need it, but I know this. Chances are you've seen God break through. If you're a child of God, you have at some point seen God break through in your life. Every once in a while, when your enemy comes to taunt you and pick on you and say, oh, you can't beat that enemy, you need to turn around and remind your enemy and yourself the faithfulness of your God in your past. Because God has most certainly broken through before. And he is the God who never changes. Since he broke through yesterday, he will break through today and he will be ready and waiting to break through tomorrow. Little boy David knew how big his God was. So David wasn't focused on how small he was. We walk by faith, not by sight. Here's the last point, point number four. Saul watched. I love this one. Saul just watched. 1 Samuel 17, verse 16. For 40 days, every morning and evening, the Philistine champions strutted in front of the Israelite army, including the king people. For 40 days, the king of Israel sat there and watched the giant taunt his army and his nation. And God was in his corner, not Goliath. And yet Saul sat there and watched. And this is what many of us become guilty of. We get so overwhelmed and dare I say too impressed with the strength or size of our enemy in this area of our life where we need a breakthrough. We get so overwhelmed by our enemy's strength and size that we just fall back and we watch everything he is doing or saying. But I want you to know, one of the biggest reasons David saw a breakthrough, saw God break through so many times in his life is 4B. David, my man, ran. David did not watch. David did not sit. David ran. Let me read it to you. 1 Samuel 17, verse 48. As Goliath moved closer to attack, In other words, everybody else would have been afraid right now. The giant moves closer, coming after you. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. And we know what happens next. He reached for that stone. That stone landed right where it needed to. The giant fell, and David killed him and cut off his head. Listen to me. I know there are some of us who during these last couple of months of of quarantine, being stuck at home, you're, you're up against it. You are up against it and you feel like you are unable to see breakthrough in your life. And here's what I believe. The only thing, if there was only one thing God wanted me to communicate to you and send the message, send a message your way, it's this. This is not going to come down to whether or not you can break through. This is going to come down to whether or not you allow God to break through. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. We're going to get in it right now. We're going to do some damage against all of our enemies in prayer right now. And you know where we're going to start? We're going to start with anybody that doesn't know Jesus yet. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're watching this, and you'd say, hey, I'm up against it, Preston. I, I need the ultimate breakthrough. I am losing in so many areas and I want to see breakthrough and victory in my life. I want to meet Jesus today. I want to meet Jesus. I want to make him Lord of my life. I want God on my side. I want God to burst through all of my enemies like a raging flood. If that's you, with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want you to just do something that might seem silly because you might be watching alone. I just want you to put your hand up. I want you to put your hand up. Listen, you might be watching this live. You might be watching this a week later. We're having people reach out to us in the middle of the week, in the middle of the night, giving their lives to Jesus. So whenever you're watching this, know this. God is in your room right now. The God of the universe is standing there with you. And if you want to meet him personally, shoot your hand up. If you don't know him, shoot your hand up. 
I want to make God Lord in my life. I want to know him as father. I want to know Jesus as friend. I want the Holy Spirit to make my life his home. I want to meet Jesus today. Just put your hand up. Anybody else? Okay, with every head bowed, every eye closed. This is an important moment. And if you're watching this and and you're a believer in Jesus, I want you to be praying right now. Be praying for those watching, whether it's live or on delay. You be praying. Now, if you raised your hand and you want to make Jesus Lord of your life, you want to experience a measure of breakthrough you've never seen before in your life by simply letting God step in and be God and burst through all your enemies like a raging flood. If that's you, I just want you to repeat this simple prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I'm done doing things my way. I'm done fighting my fights alone. I'm tapping you in. Jesus, I believe that you are the son of the living God. I believe you came to this earth to die for my sins on the cross. God, forgive me of all of my sins. I believe. Jesus, I make you Lord of my life. Now, God of the universe, would you break through my enemies like a raging, roaring flood? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Way to go, you. Let's keep praying. With every head bowed, every eye closed. If you'd say, press and listen, I need a breakthrough. I need a big time. I need a big time. I need a breakthrough. You don't need to email me, text me, and tell me what it is. Here's what I want you to do. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You need a breakthrough. If you need God to burst through your enemies, I want you just to put your hand up. Just put it up. And if you really want to be bold, put both your hands up. (laughs) Just just give up fighting that fight. Tap God in. I need a breakthrough. Just put your hands up. All right, I want to pray over you. God of the universe, I pray right now that you would embolden every person who just raised their hands, that you would strengthen them that you would speak softly to them, that you'd remind them you are in their corner. You are with them. You go before them. You are their rear guard. And it is your desire to destroy every one of their enemies, every stronghold, every power and principality that set itself against them. God, I come against small thinking in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that every one of them will be reminded if they're a believer in Jesus, they are a son or daughter of the Most High God. And the God of the universe wants to break through. Lord, would you break through in the area of their life? Would you, Holy Spirit, point out to them right now the steps they need to take in order to see and experience that breakthrough you desire for them to have in this area of life? You are the God who bursts through. Thank you, God, for not putting it on them to break through. All they have to do is tap you into this match and let you burst through their enemies like a raging flood. Holy God, mighty God, would you do it in every one of our lives, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love it. Can you tell I'm a little bit riled up? It's not even about the cowboys, you know what I'm saying? I'm just riled up. I I love it when, when the Heavenly Father says, hey, some of my kids are getting picked on, and I'm done with this. I can't help but get riled up. Okay, so if if you are up against it and you need somebody to pray with you, text us, reach out. Okay, we want to pray with you. And and let me say this, if you prayed that prayer with me and made Jesus the Lord of your life and and you became a child of God today, huge, all of heaven is celebrating right now. If you made that incredible decision, I want to ask you to do one thing. All right, would you text the name Jesus to the number Two four five eight seven. All right. Just text the name Jesus to the number on your screen, and we're gonna respond. We're gonna send you some stuff. If you don't have a Bible, we'll get you one. All right. 
because you don't have to fight alone. God is with you, and so is the family of God, all right? I want to say one more thing before we dismiss together. I know most of you, if not all of you, have seen this week what happened with Ahmaud Arbery. And I know, I know there's rage, I know there's anger, I know there's sadness and hurt. And, and I just, I want to say this. It's got to change. People, it's got to change. We're the family of God. And for those of us who read it and thought, oh, that's so sad, listen to me, and I don't mean this disrespectfully. It could have been your son. It could have been mine. And it needs to matter to us as though it was our son because it was somebody's son. It was. So listen, I'm not coming against this. I'm just reminding all of us. We've got to do better. We've got to do better. If you have a little root of racism in your heart, get it out. That's not God. Get it out. Jesus died for them, all of them, all of us. Who's the them? You are, not the other them. We're all of them. Jesus died for us, okay? We've got to do better. Please, I'm begging you, don't let this just be a blip on the radar screen. This isn't just a tragedy. This is God awful, all right? So we need to be praying. We need to be praying for law enforcement, that that God would uproot anybody who is carrying out the law in an ungodly way. We just need to ask God to uproot all that. They're there to protect and serve us, all right? Come on. There's so many things I'd love to say, but we just need to be praying. We need to, we need to beg God to burst through in our nation and all over the world. This cannot stand. And the family of God needs to be known more than any other organization on the planet for the unbridled, unrelenting, un beatable love of God, all right? So let's this week all endeavor to walk in the love of God, especially as we get back into grocery stores and there are people who don't see things the same way as us. We might get frustrated with them. Let's walk in love. Let's most certainly not allow hate to have any place in our hearts. Let's be praying. Let's do better. I love you with all of my heart. I miss you. I can't wait to see you again. Have a great week.